Hi everyone, I'm Miss McCausland and in this session I want to share with you one of my favourite artists, Yelena James. We're going to be recreating one of her artworks in this art session together. I've created videos so that you can draw with me and work alongside me watching the way I compose the page, hold my pencil and complete the challenge. It's important to set up your A4 page like I do too. Don't squash your drawing into a corner, make sure it's the same size as mine is on this A4 page. Rewind and pause as often as you need as I'll be giving you lots of tips on how to do this. I'll use equipment that you already have in the house. However, sometimes I will show you techniques and media that will help take your art to the next level, but it's not essential. So you will need a pencil, a sharpener, a rubber and white A4 paper. Even better if you have your sketchbook with you. If not, any white A4 paper from your house will be fine. I've chosen Elena James to study as her art is a content escape from the everyday world. She grew up and attended art school in Sarajevo, which is the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. At 18, she moved to America, eventually settling in Portland, Oregon. She prefers working in pens, inks, markers and acrylics. Her colourful arrangements are floral and alien, organic and sci-fi, which radiate emotion. I want us today to follow in her footsteps and feel happy and relaxed whilst doing the challenge. If you want to find out more about her and explore more of her artwork, then go to her about section on her website. I'll discuss her more in part two of this video when we complete the artist study page. So the key characteristics of her work is that she uses bold and thin lines, organic shapes and tangled lines. Her lines are fluid not sketchy, and she uses vibrant colours and repeating patterns. The subjects that she draw are very, very reminiscent of underwater dreamlike scenes when I look at them. Today we're going to recreate her work using pencils, pencil colours and black biro. If you don't have pencil colours then don't worry because you can recreate this very nicely just using a black biro or a black fine liner. It will still look great as long as you keep those lines sharp and fluid. You should find this a meditative task, which you can really immerse yourself in. Pause the video, get yourself ready, put relaxing music on and enjoy this drawing session with me. So, step one. As you can see here, I've drawn a grid on top, but it's only highlighting the middle of the horizontal and the vertical lines. So I'm going to chain, move those across to this page here. So it's about 20.5 centimeters across. So I need to do 10.2. 10 10 and again, near the top, 10.2. And very lightly draw a line down there and that will be my reference grid. Then it's almost 30 so if I just budge my ruler up a little I can say 15. 15 centimeters is about right and there's my center point for the page. Step two, starting at the bottom left of your page, we're going to start mapping out in light pencil, the key parts, the, the larger sections of this artwork that Yelena has done. To do this, I'm going to be using my motor memory and I'm going to be following along with my index finger. So in this bottom left one here, I can see this shape here and it goes just below halfway and I can sketch that in there. This teardrop shape here is just to the left of the halfway point. And using my motor memory, it looks something like that. 
We want to get it as accurate as possible, but do remember it's very forgiving. So if you did get it at slightly the wrong angle, it would be absolutely fine. It would still be recreating the style of Yelena James. We've got an alien-like blob here, which is just off to the right of the centre of this one here and fairly in the middle. So it's another thin teardrop, something like that. I'm ignoring anything which isn't the bold big pieces at the moment. So this one here, I'm going to start with a sausage and then I'm going to turn it into that shape there. I then want to learn this shape down here, but I need to make sure I get that intersecting point at the bottom. Because then I can join it up like so. This shape here is around the middle. I've got a little blob there and a little blob there. And then weaving in between, going to about there, is this shape. Above that, reaching the corner, we've got this circular shape. I'm just cutting that in half. I could have done it as one, but it just felt easier to cut that into two to create those two parts there. I don't think I need to fill in the inside bits at the moment, and I'm happy that that first quarter there is done. Moving into this top section, I might as well do that right now. I've got one here, and I've got one here, these bug-like shapes. And then I've got, near the middle, I've got these shapes. Now what we'll do later is a title up here. So if we leave it here, we might want to work our way into a title in the second section of this video. Over here, this blob turns into one arm, two arms, one that goes through, Remember, always checking where it cuts through. One there. And all of those have those blobs on the end, which I don't need to draw at the moment. The next one goes underneath and then sits on the line. The one under that, using that motor memory, cuts to there. And finally, this last one stays in that first section like that. Finally we've got these flying saucer type jellyfish shapes in this final one. We're going to start with those first then work back towards this piece here. So this one goes from halfway almost to the edge. Comes down a bit further than our line. And then cuts underneath like so. It's got a blob on top which touches our line and is just off to the right of the centre of that jellyfish shape. You then have a line that comes over the edge and one that goes underneath. Moving to the second part, just there. Can draw that shape and if you look really carefully you'll see that they both overlap. Underneath that you then have a very large jellyfish shape which goes to here, again using that as my reference point. If you draw the basic shape then you can check it and shape it more into the shape that you can see there. This final one I think would be good if we draw that line up from around the centre there and then I would be tempted to draw a series of circles one, two, three, 
four and then the fifth, they're more squashed circles. And then we can join them up later. Finally, in this bottom section, in the middle of this one here, got a piece like that. Then we've got just above it one, two, three, and then a smaller one there. If you feel comfortable at this point, I think it's time to move on to the biro and to move on to our next stage. If you don't feel quite comfortable yet, then stay in pencil for a little bit longer. I think now's a good point before we do anything permanent to just double check that you're happy that everything is in the right place. Because if it's not, you can still change it. But once we're working in biro and fine liner, we can't change it anymore. It's also a nice point to, to mention that Yelena James wouldn't work with a grid like this. She would work in a more vegetative way. Um, another artist who does this is Friedensrich Hunterwasser. And he worked in a vegetative way where he started off at one point and just let the drawing grow like vegetation around and outwards. So the more you practice this style and get used to those fluid motions, the more you'll be able to do that vegetative style in the future. But for now, I think it's important that we work together with this style following the step by step. We're now going to work with the bolder lines. I'm going to start in this bottom one here. I'm going to start shading in those bolder areas where I can see all that black. Now, as I said before, if you want to do this with a fine liner, you're very welcome to, or you could do it with your biro. What I wouldn't do is use a Sharpie or a permanent marker, because as we know, that bleeds through the page and we don't want that to happen. So we want those fluid lines like so. I've not drawn the blobs on yet, but I will do. Constantly referring back to the original to make sure I've got everything in the right place. Starting to draw these blobs on as well. Now I can see going to the top there that actually mine's a little bit too high, but it's not a big problem because it still reflects her work and it's, it's almost in the right place. So if you've done the same and realised that actually it's not perfect, then just remember we're not actually after perfection here, we're after recreating the style of an artist. Now for that bold stem that goes all the way down, I'm going to draw it once and then fill it in a bit better. Now I'm going to swap my biro because I don't think that's a very good one for this. So sometimes you just get one that doesn't flow quite as well. Do change it if it's not working for you. There we go. Then I've got that part that sticks out there. Got a blob here. And then whilst I'm here, I'm going to learn 
those lines that go around the outside as well. Using my motor memory. Making sure I leave a gap of one in between. Next one, I'm going to outline it and then fill it in afterwards. Try and use that fluid moment, mo movement all the way down. And like what I was doing just there where I became a bit too sketchy, I forgot what I was doing there and became too sketchy. Once you've done the outline, you can shade it in quite happily in the centre. I wouldn't press too hard with your biro. If you did want to get it darker later, you can overlap to build up that darkness to it. And then use these blobs at the bottom and fill those in better. Realising that it's thicker at the top, then it goes thinner, then it turns into this blob. As if it's dripping. another blob over here and another one over here constantly locating where things are in relation to other things on that drawing. Now, it would be good to use your motor memory on this part because you can see that actually it goes at a funny angle, this does. It's also a bit thicker than you'd expect. Now, the part I missed earlier is this part here. 
So I'm just going back to pencil to pencil that in before I shade that in darker. And again, I could shade it all at once or I could shade it. I could do the outline and then shade it on the inside. So still only adding the bold outlines and the big details at this point. And remember, don't press too hard because by now your hand will start to hurt if you've been pressing too hard. Follow that all the way through up to the side, just there. And then I'm going to finish off with this one. That bold part in the middle. And these sides, which are much easier now that I've got them in the right place. really good practice for your fine motor skills. So. Keeping that line nice and steady and not going off like I just did there. But the lovely thing is you can draw these bumps where you've made any mistakes. course going back to that motor memory wherever it would help I think the easiest way of doing this part is by drawing lots of circles one two three one two three four five one two Three, four, five. These look a little bit like eyes, I think. There's a lot of repeating patterns in her work, which you'll spot as you're drawing it. You'll feel like you're repeating, doing the same thing to create this bigger picture. I'm going to do this top bit up here, drawing these round. Again, using that guide to help us as I put them in there. Now this one up here, I can add these in now. these dots around the edges. As you're doing this, you'll be thinking about what you think this looks like.
I'm going to add this one down here. And finally this part here. What's really nice to do here is to follow it along with your finger because it really keeps you focused on the part that you're drawing and it reminds you to keep looking back and forth because as this becomes more meditative for you, you tend to stop looking at the artwork as much and just at yours and that's where you might end up doing something that you didn't quite mean to when replicating this. These look like little bugs or little stamens from a flower. Right, the next part I'm going to swap to a fine liner, just to experiment and see what it's like to decide what I prefer to use. I'm going to start here. I'm going to draw all these overlapping lines like so. centre part here and up all the way around like that. You don't have to change from a biro. If you're enjoying using the biro, use it still. But it is quite nice to experiment with different things to find out what you like more and why to work out who you are as an artist. And goes over the line, goes over the line, goes up, across, down, and up there, then across there. Lots of lines going down through the middle and round the other side, like so. I think the easiest thing to do with this part is to draw a circle, then to draw your dots at different heights on the circle. And then you can add all those in like so. Draw three circles in the centre of each of these. One, two, three. Not in each one actually. One there, big one there, and one down here. Some lines across those. And if you're thinking, that's a lot of colouring in to do, then what you could do once you've outlined it, is fill that in with a dark colouring pencil.
noticing those repeating patterns again. So this is a black pencil colour, not a HB pencil. So don't get too confused because it will look too shiny if you use the wrong, wrong one there. So you want to use either a dark grey or a black pencil colour. If you want to, like I say, you can stay with a biro, ballpoint pen if you want to. Totally up to you. We're just doing all the black parts at the moment. Final part I'm going to show you before I leave you to it for a little while is this part here in which I'm going to draw all the way around that shape that I've done already like so in that fluid smooth mov movement now my pen's catching there because it's on top of the graphite from the HB pencil so if you are having that problem do feel free to just lighten up and lift some of that graphite off and then your pen will work much easier over the top of it and I've got this blob in the middle and then I'm going to go back to the pencil shading as long as you're neat then it's absolutely fine to do that because it captures that same essence that we're aiming for and it is just that little bit quicker. Again, don't press too hard. You can always press harder later if you want that effect. And then you can start to add parts like these over here. If you're doing this part, I draw in these dashes first. Like the baked beans we've drawn in the past and then you can shade in around like that drawing this part in here careful to notice those red marks in there that if you just shaded all in black you won't be able to put those red parts in later and the same at this side let's come together really nicely going to draw these blobs in here which actually go to a piece here so actually I need to learn those first and then 
can draw them down. Now mine are too long, but that's okay. Because it still looks similar. I've captured that style there. The long, long flowing lines. Bottom. And those lines there. On both sides. blobs with the thicker line and then the thinner line and I've got another one there squeezing that one in like that constantly looking back and forth That bit in the corner I'm going to leave for now I'm going to let you do that bit whilst I show you the next stage so finish off everything in the black finish off that top area as well and you'll end up with something similar to this you then want to swap to your coloring pencils if you have them I'm going to move to red it could either be a red fine liner or it could be a red coloring pencil if not like I say you could stay with the black and white and that's absolutely fine. You can skip this next stage where we're colouring in. For the thicker areas, since I've got the choice, I'll use a pencil colour. to colour in anywhere that I need to be red. I'm trying to keep it a flat colour. What I mean by flat is that you're not varying the tone. You're keeping a very flat texture, very flat tone for those larger areas. Working through each square, adding those in there. And as I go, I'm noticing details that I wish I'd added, but I can always add later. Now, there's a few details, like I said, that I'd missed before. That's fine. I'll come back to them later. I'm going to swap to a red biro or a red pen to do some details here. Those finer details that I know a pencil wouldn't do. Now, you'll notice in the background, I've not actually added any of the red droplets in the background yet but I will do in a few minutes. I'm just working on those front details first. Okay I'm going to add some of those background ones in. I think I'll do the blue first and again I could either move to a blue pencil colour if I have one or a blue biro. Now neither of these are quite the same colour but I think that's absolutely fine it's near enough. And what I'm going to do for this part is learn those wiggly shapes And notice how they overlap each other. These really organic wobbly shapes. It's all the way to that center line, around, 
you see I'm constantly looking back and forth and then I want to draw all these lines in like I said it's not the ideal colour but it's close enough and I can replicate those beautiful waves might help to have your finger over again to replicate and to be able to see where you're working. Now, if I hadn't have just looked, I wouldn't have noticed that these lines don't come all from the top. Let me cut across there. This is how I'll continue to add these parts. You get that sense of layering and it's very 2D piece of artwork but that that sense of things in the foreground and the background at the same time. These down here, if I do a couple of examples of those, I would learn it. and then draw inside them afterwards. So I'd, draw, I'd learn the two, the outer edges of it, and then I'd learn the inside. Now remember, it's very forgiving. If you get them in the wrong place, that's okay. Just aim to get them as close as possible. And notice that some of them overlap, some of them underlap, and some of them just go over the top of each other. And they build and build and build and build. And I'll build and build and build that over there. Next, this area here, I'm going to draw all the outlines, being careful of the direction of those lines and the fact they're thinner at the middle, wider as you go further out. It's those little details which will help you understand this artwork all the more. And then, once you've got those parts in and you've finished those, these parts are exactly the same as these wiggly parts down here. You just need to be aware that they go in this direction, draw the outside and the inside of them, how they cross over, and so on and so forth. If it helps you, draw the overall shape, and then you can draw inside it. Very wiggly lines, these ones. And then I can draw that in there using that as my guideline. And finally, I'm going to choose a very pale pencil colour green and I'm going to shade inside these. And if I build up all those techniques, I'll end up with a finished Elena James piece. Again, constantly checking. And these parts in here would be the same as that. And then finally, absolutely finally this time, the last thing you'll do is draw all these little circles in the background. And I've done that last 
because I can locate where they are judging by the blue parts from before. So they overlap each other and those are really easy to put in. Now I can locate them against everything else on there. So I'm going to continue this whilst you do yours and we'll meet back here again in part two where we'll look at the rest of the page. Okay, thanks for watching. Good luck.